Hey guys, Graphite here and today I've got a brand new tutorial for you. This time we're going to be working with text and sort of seeing how it works. Uh, but in Corel Draw. So, let's get started. Let's zoom out a sec. Okay, cool. Straight away, as you'll see, uh, usual Corel Draw page. We're going to be focusing on the left hand side today and this A letter here. You should recognize that as text. To a uh, short key to get it is F8. So if you press F8 on your keyboard, you'll see the little A text kind of cursor thing appears. Uh, there are two ways to add a text box. One, you can click and type in uh, graphite like that, or alternatively, you can click and drag. It'll show as blue and then black a text box like this, which uh, if you click off of will not vanish uh, as opposed to this one so this one looks neater on a page but this one's good if you want to type sort of big blocks of text um, okay let's get straight into using it uh, coloring if you select the text you can see the bar over here uh, I've got all these colors I can select green or red and with this I can select brown or I don't know dark light grey uh, or blue you know, whatever I whatever I like. I'm just gonna leave them as we're just gonna leave them as black today. Uh, so there we go. I'm, I'm gonna do a tutorial on colour later on sometime. So up here you've got your fonts. Should be fairly familiar to you. I've got a lot of fonts. You probably don't have as many but that's alright. Whichever ones you know you prefer to use. Up here we've got text sizes. Uh, the smallest default that uh, CorelDRAW uh, uh, put on this by 6. Let's leave it about 18. Uh, and over here we've got our classic bold italics underline. And oh yeah, to move these text boxes, if you see there's a little X in the middle here, you can hold that down and move them around the screen like that so click and hold hold them down and drop them in you can drag these around so you can always move them um, over here we've got justification this is quite useful if you click that down you'll see it's on none which basically means left justification here that's the sort of default that Corel draw give as well and if you click it again you can see center this will as it says on the bar up here, center your text. Now if I was to press shift and drag the text box out. Oh, that's laggy. Uh, it will leave it in the center no matter what. Uh, if I was to shrink it like that, it'll always be in the center. It's quite nice to have. Then over here we've got right justification, which as it says, justifies it to the right. Um, this is this can be quite nice to use uh, sort of leaflets and booklets and things, but I don't tend to use it very often. Uh, we've got fully justified, which should uh, split it across your screen, but it doesn't really for this. And force justify, which no matter what, it will divide it across the entire text box. So if I say write A or F G, it'll put G at the end because it wants to fill the entire text box with text. So if I was to type in some more letters, it would do that. I'll come to, I'll come to that bit in a minute. Um, so yeah, it will always, that's obviously not a word, but it'll always uh, fully uh, put it across the screen. This is quite useful for doing big blocks of text, sort of I don't know, a magazine or something. Um, you can get quite cool things with this. Next, I wanted to touch on that little red thing you saw earlier. Uh, that little red thing. If you click on it and you type in normal text, it, oh, hang, on, let's uh, put it back to left. If you see, it'll keep the text box black if you type in normal text. However, if you say go over that and type in an extra letter, it doesn't appear here. I've typed in an extra letter, S, but you can't see it. But the text box will turn red to sort of alert you that that's happened and you'll have this little arrow here instead of a block as you can see and a little thing there if you click and drag that down the S 
will appear. Oh, I'm going to show you a bit more. And when it does appear, it'll turn back to black again to show you everything's fine. It's really useful if you've missed off a letter or something on the end of a word and you've forgotten about it. So yeah, it's quite useful to have that. If you missed off a letter, you're fine. Uh, so let's go back to some of this. Let's make this text box a bit smaller. And let's move on to some more things. Over here we've got bullet points. Uh, it says it there. Nice and easy. You just click them. If you want to get rid of them, it's easy to just click it. It doesn't matter where you are uh, on the text. If you click it, it'll add them. Take it off, it won't. And over here, this is another quite useful thing I found. If you're typing in, you know, uh, sort of a paragraph or something, and you want it to look, oh, see it's red. Make it bigger. Should have missed out some things. It's because I've got spaces in there. And you typed out some letters, whatever. And you click this up here. It'll take the first letter of your paragraph and make it large. So if I move this out of the way, you should be able to see that it makes it big. If you're typing some kind of um, sort of slightly old kind of I don't know script or something like that, and you want to do that, that that can look quite nice, especially with a good font. That can be quite effective. So I found that's a good thing to use, and we'll make it small again. Let's make the text small up here. Let's bring this back up. I'm going to use this in a minute. That's why it's here. Um, okay, now we move on to the next thing on our list, which is uh, this here. This text properties. This is your best friend for text. You can do so much with this. If you click it once, it'll bring up an extra bar here. You'll see. You've got your normal bar here with your layers. Again, I'll touch on those in another episode. But here you've got a bar full of things to do. I'm not going to go through all of the things because some of them are quite sort of complicated and there's really no need to know them at the moment. But over here, as you see, you've got your bold, italics, underline, more options, normal italic, various things. Uh, if you've got fonts that do that. Uh, but the things we're interested in are down here. So let's use this. Okay, let's take those off. Right, so here you've got lines. Now you can put lines through the middle of a word, which can be quite useful if you want to cross it out neatly or show that you changed it. Um, and over here you can put lines over the top of a word. I haven't used this myself, but I have seen people who have used it. Um, now over here, we've got this, which is pretty cool. This means, uh, this is character angle, which means you can, if you hold it down and drag your mouse up or down, you can tilt your text from side to side and you can also just type it in here so if I type in uh, 6 you can be very precise and tilt it and if I tilt minus 6 it'll tilt it the opposite way that uh, that angle is, is really nice uh, I have used this a few times and now over here we come to uh, some more character things over here you can change the distance between each letter but this is quite nice um, when using this I mean, you can bunch them up really closely if you're doing a word. If you've got a good font that doesn't, you know, that looks good like that. And up here, we've got something pretty cool. I'm going to need to type in, copy this. Oop. Type it in down here. This up here changes the distance between the lines, so you can drag it up. I mean, well, drag it down for closer text, or drag it further up for further away text. And it's really nice. Again, you can type it in you know, to whatever you want, 70, that's quite close, um, but the default's 100, which is good, because it's sort of, it, it's a nice spacing there. Uh, final thing down here is uh, back colour. Over here you've got a sort of an orange A, well, an orange background with an A in it, and you can see it's got an X at the moment, which means no fill. If you click this drop down menu here, it says background colour, and you can select from all of these colors plus extras. I'll show you that in another episode again. Um, so don't worry about that. Uh, if I select yellow, this will be bright, but yep, yeah, see? Sort of like a highlighted theme kind of type thing. And you can select gray. So this, this is quite useful if you want to sort of make something stand out. And obviously, if you want to change it back to nothing, you can click the X and it'll show up there. Um, I think I think that's about it for here. Uh, again, this is the this is an increasing the distance between letters. 
<coughs> but uh, yeah, the one down there does it, and it's also with all of the others, so I tend to use that one. Uh, I think that's about it for now, so if you want to get rid of this bar, obviously you click that again, and it disappears, and so you can get some really cool looking text by doing some quite simple things, to be honest. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, if there's anything else you want to see me do, uh, that you, you know that you personally want to see me do, then do leave a comment, and I'll see if I can uh, record something like that. And uh, there'll be more of these tutorials coming to you in the future. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, and see ya.